Hello and welcome to ECE 53-6320 Microwave Engineering. I'm your instructor, Dr. James Nagel, and for this lecture I would like to introduce you to the lumped element model for transmission line theory. Now again, if you've taken ECE 3300, a lot of this material should be reviewed, so don't feel the need to take extensive notes. This is just kind of a refresher, plus a kind of intuitive picture as to what is going on in terms of electromagnetic field theory and how that relates to the circuit model. To begin, I'd like you to consider a parallel wire transmission line. Uh, now it doesn't have to be a parallel wire, this could be something like a coaxial cable or it could be a microstrip line or any other combination of just two conductive materials with one being a signal and the other being reference. But as always, the, the parallel cylindrical wire just makes for a nice handy dandy model when doing some of these thought experiments. And the results do generalize to the, the broader arbitrary configuration of just any two conductors. Now imagine what happens as a voltage and a current travel down this pair of conductors. And what I want you to do also is imagine a tiny little sliver of a slice right down the middle there. And we're gonna give it a little length of delta Z. Presumably this delta Z is a very tiny little slice, like say a millimeter long out of several meters of this transmission line. And we're just gonna zoom in and focus on uh, like what is happening physically in terms of the charges and the currents and their correspond, uh, corresponding electric fields and magnetic fields. Now remember in the signal line, there's going to be some net positive charge, while in the reference line, there will be some negative charge and between them there will exist an electric field and a magnetic field. So this next slide shows a visualization of those exact fields there and they've been kind of normalized to fill the color gradient. So focusing on the electric field there on the left, you see there's some net positive charge on the left, net negative charge on the right. The separation of charges means that there is some electric field between them. And since there is some potential difference between those two conductors, you can imagine that by definition, this implies capacitance. Now, turn your attention also to the, the image on the right. And so what you're seeing there is the magnetic field. So the left conductor being the signal has a, a current coming out of the page. And so by the right hand rule, you point your thumb out of the page and your finger, fingers will curl in the direction of the magnetic field, which is counterclockwise. Then of course, opposite on the reference line, the current is going into the page. And so your thumb points in and your fingers curl clockwise to represent the magnetic field around that conductor. And by analogy, the separation of charge implies capacitance. So the separation of current implies inductance. Anywhere there is current creating a magnetic field that will manifest from a purely circuit perspective as some net real inductance. Furthermore, these wires are not necessarily going to be perfect electrical conductors. In fact, any real material is going to have some finite conductivity. So what that means is any current uh, propagating through these wires is necessarily going to lose energy in the form of ohmic loss, which we then represent as resistance. So there's a very real resistive loss traveling down the wires uh, coming out of the page at us, a series resistance. Furthermore, the material in which these wires are immersed may not be perfectly lossless either. For all we know, this is like a saline solution that I've immersed it in, which means there is some actual ohmic heating going on in the surrounding medium between the wires. So all those electric fields there between the wires could uh, uh, hypothetically be burning up energy as well, which we can represent as some kind of parallel resistance uh, that's tangential, say, to the, the page here, connecting the, uh, the signal wire to the reference. So you put all of that together and you get what is called the lumped element model for a transmission line. So this tiny little sliver of the transmission line has some finite resistance, a finite inductance, some finite capacitance between the lines, and a finite conductance. So that's the, the G there, that little parallel resistor going from one to the next. Now another very important feature of the lumped element model is that it's far more instructive to think about this in terms of per unit length parameters. Uh, so these are called the characteristic parameters of the transmission line. So to demonstrate, suppose I have one meter of this transmission line and it has a total series resistance of 1000 ohms. 
then by definition, if it's consistent down that entire dis uh, that entire length, then if I had one tiny little millimeter segment of this transmission line, then it will have exactly one ohm of resistance across that distance. So the fixed resistance is R prime times delta Z. So a characteristic per unit length multiplied by a distance will give me some finite resistance. And of course, the same thing applies to all of the other parameters, which we denote with the little prime there. So L prime implies Henry's per meter, G prime implies uh, Siemens per meter, and C prime will imply uh, farads per meter. Next, you'll also notice that there is some current on the signal line moving down, coming in from the left and then leaving out the right. Uh, there's also some change in voltage between those two points on the line. So we represent this say as V of Z comma T, and then there's a V of Z plus delta Z comma T. So the idea of this model is it represents a tiny little piece of that transmission line. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna squish that little distance delta Z as close to zero as we can get. So we're gonna take a limit, and of course, when you do limits like this approaching zero, you get a bunch of derivatives, which will in turn lead us to the telegrapher equations. But for now, I just want you to imagine in your head that this lumped element model is derived from the physical separation of charges and the current, which in turn creates electric and magnetic fields. But once we have this nice little model, we can now start doing a bunch of mathematical analysis, which we will then save for the next lecture.